Hey everybody, welcome back to Neha's Biology. So today we are going to discuss what are the various factors that affect the enzyme activity. So let's start. So the first factor that affects the enzyme activity is the substrate concentration. So whenever there is uh, more amount of substrate, the rate of the reaction would increase, but only up to a certain point. So increasing concentration of the substrate increases the rate of the reaction, but to a certain point, once all the enzymes have their uh, active site occupied by the substrate then further increase in the substrate concentration would not affect the rate of reaction. So this is because all the enzymes are bound to the substrate they are not free to bind to any other substrate which we are providing to the chemical reaction. So this is how its graph looks we have discussed this graph earlier in the previous video. Here you can see that the reaction velocity that is V and the substrate concentration are plotted here and you can see that the by increasing the substrate concentration the velocity of the reaction is also increasing but only up to this point after that it is saturating. This is because the chemical reaction has reached the final or the maximum velocity that is Vmax. We have also discussed in the previous video what is Vmax, Vmax by 2 and Km. So we are not going to discuss all these in this video. Next is the enzyme concentration. So whenever we increase the amount of the enzyme then the chemical reaction will also increase. This increase would be possible only when the substrate is available to bind to the enzyme. So even if we are increasing the enzyme concentration, the reaction will not speed up as uh, fast as possible because the substrate may become limiting. So once all the substrates are bound to the enzyme, the reaction will no, not speed up. So this is how its graph looks. So the enzyme concentration is plotted against the reaction velocity. So here you can see that the uh, whenever we increase the enzyme concentration, the velocity also increases, but only up to this point. So this is because even if we are increasing the enzyme concentration, the substrate is becoming limiting as the enzyme would require the substrate to bind to. So if we are not providing substrate to the increasing amount of the enzyme, then the reaction velocity will, would not increase any further. Now the next factor is the temperature. So we know that the enzymes are proteins. Most of the enzymes are proteins and proteins denature or unfold at higher temperature and they become inactive at lower temperature. So the proteins or the enzymes denature due to which the enzyme activity also decreases with increase in temperature and uh, the enzyme would increase the activity of the chemical reaction or the velocity of the chemical reaction but after reaching a particular maximum value it will start decreasing because the activity of the enzyme would decrease or the catalytic activity there would be the loss of catalytic activity of the enzyme. So there is a certain temperature range uh, in which a particular enzyme works and that temperature range is known as optimum temperature that varies from the enzyme to enzyme. So different enzymes have different optimum temperatures. Most of the, uh, in most of the warm blooded animals, the maximum temperature the enzymes can tolerate is around 40 degrees Celsius. So maximum temperature for most of the enzymes to work in our body requires almost 40 degrees Celsius but it can vary from individual to individual. So here you can see that the 
temperature is being plotted against the percent activity of the enzyme so here you can see that with increasing uh, temperature the percent activity is also increasing but after attaining this peak it will start decreasing this is because the due to the presence of high temperature the enzyme activity is decreasing because of the denaturation of the protein uh, by which the enzyme is made up of next factor is ph that is power of hydrogen so the uh, concentration of hydrogen ions are affecting the enzyme activity as the enzymes are very sensitive to ph because of the presence of certain amino acids which are present at their active site so the charged amino acids which are present at their active site uh, loses certain charges uh, for example if they are uh, positively charged at a particular ph or a ph uh, which is lower than 7 then after uh, we increase the ph above 7 the enzyme activity would decrease as the uh, charge on these amino acids would also differ so there is change in the charge of amino acids and there is also a limit uh, up to which the enzymes can efficiently work and that limit is known as optimal ph so uh, the uh, enzymes work only in their optimal ph range which varies between 5.5 to 7.5 in most of the enzyme cases so this is how the graph of pH and percent activity looks like. So here you can see that the uh, pH range or the optimal pH range for the enzyme to work varies from enzyme to enzyme. For example, in the case of pepsin, it is around 2. While in the case of trypsin, it can range from 7 to 8. So, the pH optimum of the enzyme also varies from the enzyme to enzyme. Now, the next factor is the product concentration. So, whenever there is increase in the product concentration, it will start inhibiting the activity of the enzyme because the product sends a feedback mechanism to the enzyme to stop producing more of the product. So the accumulation of the reaction products generally decreases the enzyme velocity and the uh, for certain enzymes the products also combine to the active site of the enzyme and forms loose complexes which will not allow the substrate to bind to the enzyme and in turn inhibiting the enzyme activity. Another factor is inhibitor. So different inhibitors inhibit the enzyme activity they can inhibit the enzyme activity and the type of the inhibition that the enzyme is causing depends on the nature of the inhibitor. Inhibitors are less effective when the enzyme and substrate concentration is high. So if the concentration of both the enzyme and substrate is high, it will help in the formation of enzyme substrate complex instead of enzyme inhibitor complex so the reaction activity or the velocity of the reaction would not uh, inhibit get inhibited as such so there are different types of inhibitors such as competitive non-competitive and uncompetitive these would be dealt in more detail in further videos so I check for that video also now what are the activators so there are different activators or the uh, proteins which bind to the site on the enzyme which are different from the active site and they cause the activation of the enzyme or the uh, after adding the inhibitor the enzyme would uh, bind more efficiently to the substrate and increase the enzyme activity so activators can be prosthetic groups or even cofactors for example magnesium ions copper ions calcium ions sodium ions all these ions act 
as activators. They bind to the enzyme and causes the substrate to efficiently bind to the enzyme. These activators are also known as allosteric modulators or the E factors. They are known as allosteric because they can bind to the site which is different from the active site. So they are not binding to the active site of the enzyme and causing the activation. As if they bind to the active site of the enzyme then substrate would not be able to bind to the enzyme. So these binds to other sites that is other than the active site so then uh, so that the activation can easily be caused. So all these were the factors that affect the enzyme activity. In further videos we would be discussing about the enzyme inhibition in detail as it is very important for the enzyme. We would be discussing about competitive inhibition, uncompetitive inhibition and also non-competitive inhibition. So stay tuned. Goodbye.